You're live. I'm live? Okay. All right, hey, I wanted to do a live demonstration of the last step of this walk-in shower, and that is the caulking of the corners. And this is going to always be a painful thing, even for me. I do this stuff all the time. And this is the part that always stresses you out because a bad caulk joint in the corner can just kind of make your whole towel job look terrible. So I'm going to go over some tips and some things that I've learned. Um, obviously, there's plenty of ways of going about doing this. And you'll see all types of things on social media about how to go about this. But really, when it comes to caulking the corners and the tile, it really depends on your own situation and you know, on the type of tile. Um, everything's going to be a little bit different. So it's just not like you can get one tool and it just works for everything. At least in my experience, it doesn't work. You know, sometimes just my finger is the best tool to be able to get a nice caulk joint. But when you're doing corners, so you always want to caulk your corners and your walk-in showers and the primary reason is is the this wall expands and contracts different than this wall and what will eventually happen when it gets warm and cold and the humidity changes it ends up expanding contracting and causing a crack in the corner so that's why you can't grout your corners because you know it might not happen in the first six months you do the shower but probably a year down the line will end up seeing a crack going down that corner so i always recommend you use a hundred percent silicone not the acrylic um, caulking acrylic doesn't last as long and it's just not gonna I mean it matches better a lot of times the acrylic uh, caulkings match the, the grout better but you know in my mind you don't want to maintain this you don't want to, all you want to do is clean this on a daily on a regular basis and you're not going to want to have to caulk or do anything <laughs> to your showers for a long time so get the 100% silicone we had done if you watch my other live video we had done Spectralock one for the grout joints and so this is uh, their version that matches it, um, Latticil. So this is 100% silicone. I really do like these matching caulkings made by uh, Laticrete. They seem to be very fluid and work really well um, compared to some others. Ones I would stay away from would be Mapei. Um, I know Lowe's and all them stuff are carrying that stuff now, but I hate their, <laughs> their silicone. It's just very hard to work with. Um, I've had good luck with this. Ardex was another good one. Um, but just as long as it's 100% silicone, you're going to get a light slot, long lasting joint. So the first thing is, is to have multiple tools. Okay, so this is just like a standard. This is the, usually the one I normally use. It's made by Anvil. I'll put these links in the description below. But this is like, you know, a couple of dollars, has two different size tips. And I also like to have these on hand. These are just like a kit that you can get off of Amazon with all the different sizes. Now, most of them are not going to be worth anything, but it's worth just having just in case. Um, you know, like I would say probably one of the hardest caulking joints there is to do is like something like a subway tile because you have, you know, 50 different grout joints that are going all the way down the wall. And it's always really tough getting a nice smooth corner with all those grout joints. So, um, you know, a lot of these things are not going to be worthwhile in using, but it's good to have on hand. So I'm going to recommend probably something that most people don't recommend, and that is the practice on your towel job. Um, and the, the easiest way to be able to practice is just to have some acetone on hand. This will allow you to remove all of that silicone, and so you can start again. So a lot of people think that they just go ahead and caulk the whole corner and what they're stuck with is what they're stuck with. And I, I don't agree with that. I think you should practice in an area. Um, most of the time I'd recommend somewhere like underneath of one of these shelving units or something that is not quite visible, but then, you know, if it, do, if it goes badly, you can just use some acetone and, and remove all that. But the number one thing that's important before you even silicone is that it's dry. If you have any water or anything on the surface, it's gonna be a bond breaker and it's gonna make it tough for you. So let's go ahead and practice here because I don't really know what joint is going to, or what, uh, that's some kind of, uh, that's not, that, uh, there's just a little bit of that wax still on there. Um, but I'm going to do this in a visible area. I, pro I normally would not practice in a visible area, but since we're doing this on camera, I just want to um, demonstrate and try to practice. So first thing is I had already cut this, but try to keep your nozzles low. You can always widen it out and cut it bigger if you need to. But typically, whatever your widest joint is in that corner, 
is about the maximum you want to cut this. I usually cut this back about 3 sixteenths of an inch to start out with. And then if there's any, um, if I need more, I mean, the thing is, is if the, if the joint is bigger, you can always keep filling it in um, versus once you have the tip too big, then you're getting way too much caulking on there. So put it at like a 30 degree angle and then like I said, 3 sixteenths to a, a quarter inch is about all you need. So I'm just gonna caulk this at one section here. Okay. And then the next deal is to use some Windex. So this Windex is gonna keep it from smearing onto the wall. So you always just spray that area. And I'm gonna try my normal um, one that I like to use. So I'm just gonna put a lot of pressure on there. And then a lot of times I have to go back over with the finger to toll it. So that's not too bad. Um, you know, really, as long as your grout, your corner joint is all free of thin set and, uh, you know, it's actually the full gap, that, that'll really, you know, the silicone going into the towel work is what's really gonna hold that silicone into place and it's gonna make it last a long time. If you have your tile completely tight to the wall, all you're doing is smearing silicone on the other side. And that's the same concept when people tape, use masking tape on either side, and then they just, they bear, they're basically smearing it on either side. And it's not gonna last as long. If you can get silicone to go into that joint, the better that it is. So that's not too bad of a um, joint. Um, but let me just go ahead and uh, try something bigger and see if that looks any better. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to figure out which one would look best here. Maybe this is this SRD maybe. I mean, they do have a lot of these 45 degree ones. I probably would stay away from the 45 degree ones because they're gonna be harder to um, make look nice, especially against the grout joints. So something a little bit more rounded is gonna probably work better. So let me just pull that off. So that's not, that's actually better. I mean, I'm just looking just to fill that groove. I'm not looking to smear it on either side of the joint. I know that's kind of probably tough to see on camera, especially with the, the live video. Um, but, so I always have a box of rags too. That's really helpful to have plenty of paper towels to wipe things. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this tool. I think this one works out pretty well. So let's go ahead and just caulk this entire joint before the ceiling. So if you can try to stay continuous, that's the ultimate way. You know, anytime that you kind of put too much in the joint, it's just more that you have to scrape off. But just make sure that you fill that entire cavity and don't worry about going back over it either. You can always Add a little bit more before you go, so. So hey, if you can, um, please give me a like on this video. It really helps get that out to other people and gets my channel going. So I really appreciate, appreciate all the comments people have been making on these live videos. That really keeps me motivated. Um, so again, just using a little bit of Windex, spraying that corner. And I'm going to use my caulking tool and I'm going to scrape off the excess. Now this is a pretty easy towel job because it's all nice flush, even tile. I mean, it's all flat and my corner is pretty straight. So it's, like I said, it's a lot more difficult when you get into subway tile because you've got so many different grout joints and it can be very frustrating to, uh, to get all that grout out of there. So typically I, I tool it with this and I just take my finger over one more time and that just kind of really kind of smooths that out. Because I tell you what, a, a bad caulking joint in a corner can really ruin your, your look of your shower. So take your time with this and don't, you know, don't be too stressed out because you can always just take the acetone and just scrape out all that caulking and just redo it if you didn't like it. So that one worked out well. And I will go ahead and do our last two corners. Now it is recommended 
to go against the floor to uh, shower transition. And, uh, you know, that's just a recommendation from the TCNA. So if you can do that, that's a good idea. Same with around the niche. I personally am not going to mess with it. Uh, with this arch, with all the glass, um, I think, you know, especially against this glass, I'm honestly just going to leave it alone. And I use that Spectral Lock 1, so it does have a little bit of flexibility to it. Um, Laticrete would not recommend not siliconing the corners either, but um, it just aesthetically looks better, and I haven't really had much issues with that cracking. So, um, you know, always follow, it, follow it, always follow the standards, but, you know, sometimes you just use your own judgment on what really looks good compared to, you know, maybe what people recommend. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and do this one as well. And then again, just spraying that joint. That helps to keep it from smearing on the, uh, on the tile. Just kind of gives a little bit of a, a break or a uh, bond breaker so it doesn't stick on there. And then again, I'm just gonna finger this as well. Sometimes that is the best tool is just using your little, your finger to, to smooth that out. But to get the excess off, to get the right amount, using one of these tools really does help out. So I'll put these links in the description. They're not very expensive, you know, and it takes, it takes the stress away. Because uh, I know I used to be pretty stressed out about doing this part of it because, you know, I spent all this time putting this together and then, you know, you're just kind of fighting the caulking. Okay, I have one more area here between this shelf. If you get a gap somewhere where it's not, you see a little spot that's wearing out, you can just add a little bit more, not a big deal. But you just want to make sure that that joint is completely filled. Okay, and then the other thing I'm going to do are my corner, my corner shelves, because this is a really an area that you know I'm always being cleaned and. You know, a lot of the kind of abuse goes on top of these niches with all the soap and whatever else. So if you want to help, help these niches or these uh, shelves. But yeah, keeping that nozzle at the right depth too really helps out. And spray this and then you know, I'll try the caulking tool again. If this doesn't work out, I'll just scrape it all out again. It's not bad. Caulking is a tough thing to show on video because it's really hard to, to see the actual detail. You know, I see so many videos with these popsicle sticks and whatnot and you know I'm not real sure if in real life it's actually as good as what they're claiming it is. I mean but you know a popsicle stick if that works that works you know it doesn't really matter what what gets you the right groove. Now just make sure that this is dry. Yeah okay, I was spraying some Windex on there so you want to make sure that the, the shelf is dry. Especially in this corner, that's where it likes to have a problem. This actually matches pretty well to the grout, I have to say. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of silicones out there that just don't even look like anything like the <laughs> like the uh, actual 
<clears throat> so I'm just going to use my finger on this. Because I think that would work out just fine. You know, I'm not leaving too much in there, but as long as I have... There we go. Corners are always the toughest part. And uh, if we're tolling it, it really helps out. Okay. And the last shelf here. Windex. I always use a clear Windex too because uh, it's with vinegar, but I always have this Windex on hand because it, the the vinegar is what helps like any epoxy or not epoxy, but uh, any haze on tile from the the uh, from the Spectralock one. Like it, it's helpful for all your things and even epoxy. So the vinegar is what uh, it helps get that. Uh, basically gets the haze off the tile. So I always have the Windex with it. And plus I don't like the blue dye in, in a regular Windex. So I recommend getting that clear, clear stuff. So, okay, so that was it. I just wanted to do a short tutorial on this. Leave some comments below. If you have a method that really works well for you and you want to share it, please, please do. I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I could definitely learn from others as well. So. Um, let me know your method, but uh, I think just having these different tools available before you start really helps out. It's only a few dollars. I'll leave the description below. Again, give me a like, comment, share this with your friends, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Can we get close-ups? You can. Uh, I'll try. I can do the shelf, too. That looks good.